Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is my pleasure to give you a short overview of uh, Polish activities in the monitoring of ocean, ice and land changes in the warming Arctic as they are seen from the Polish perspective. Uh, Long-term environmental observations are carried on by numerous research groups in Poland, mostly in the European Arctic, with a particular focus on the Svalbard region, Svalbard archipelago, also including the surrounding ocean. Uh, and the biggest asset is, of course, the permanent year-round Polish polar station in Horsund, you already heard about, uh, with the several continuous observational programs uh, which actually were going on already since the station was established in the late 50s. There are also four seasonal field stations located at the western uh, Svalbard coast, and the Open Ocean Research Vessel Oceania, uh, which has been operating in the uh, Nordic Seas, uh, Subarctic sub Seas, and also Ice Free Arctic already since mid 80s. Uh, as the oldest and the largest uh, Polish research facility in the Arctic, the Polish um, Polar Station Horsund, has also the richest uh, portfolio of uh, long term observational programs and data collections. And uh, some of them as uh, meteorological observations, uh, seismic observations and geomagnetic observatory uh, have been already collected since late uh, 70s. And the other observational programs are slightly shorter, uh, include also, uh, for example, atmospheric physics and optics like ladder monitoring of uh, Arctic um, atmosphere, ionospheric measurements, um, monitoring, uh, monitoring of glaciers in the horizontal area, and also hydrological, environmental, and oceanographic monitoring in the fjord uh, region. Just one example, this is the long-term uh, glacier and snow monitoring in Horsund, mostly focused on changes of glacier extent, uh, gl glacier dynamics, calving intensity, and also a freshwater discharge from tidal glaciers. Also, uh, the observations, regular observations include uh, snowpack properties and snow cover distribution on different uh, glaciers in the Horsund area, as well as uh, topoclimate of glaciers. And this long time series, the ELO studying the retreat of glaciers in the horizon area over the recent decades, uh, as well as uh, changes uh, in the freshwater input to the fjord, uh, mostly due to uh, faster melting of glaciers and also intensified calving under the warmer Arctic climate. Uh, the important contribution to long-term observing programs comes also from uh, seasonal, smaller seasonal stations, which are ma meant only in the summer season. This is the example of the station located in northwestern uh, Spitsbergen in Kafiora area, area, in the vicinity of uh, several, several glaciers. And as you can see, there is an extensive list of uh, observations uh, related to, for example, uh, mass balance of glaciers, uh, ice thermal structure, uh, permafrost, and the other processes. Uh, some of these time series have been collected for more than 20 years, uh, the other uh, a bit shorter, but this also is an important contribution uh, to, mm, to monitoring of, of uh, Svalbard area. Uh, one of the most extensive observational programs in the Arctic, this is the long-term large-scale ocean monitoring program, Arex, uh, the name from Arctic Experiment which is focused on the Atlantic water inflow towards the Arctic Ocean and also into the Svalbard fjords. And the annual summer surveys uh, have been conducted from board of the research vessel Oceania, you can see her on the, on the photo here, already since mid-80s, and every year uh, the regular grid of repeated, station, repeated sections with uh, more than 200 stations are covered uh, during three months cruise from June to August. Uh, the oceanographic, optical, aerosol, also acoustical measurements, and extensive biological and chemical sampling. And in addition to these uh, synoptic surveys, uh, there, there also there are moorings deployed for year-round measurements in the eastern Fram Strait and north of Svalbard uh, under the RX observational program. Just one example of the time series, which is collected uh, under uh, under the ARCS program, this is, uh, 50, you can see, 15 years, and actually the time series is longer, of the large-scale ocean temperature uh, in the Atlantic water inflow to the Arctic Ocean. Uh, this parameter is very important for the Arctic climate, in particular for retreating sea ice. Uh, 
Poland also participates in the up-to-date largest European uh, project uh, focused on development of integrated Arctic observing system, uh, project Intaros, funded uh, by the European Union uh, under the Horizon 2020 umbrella for five years, uh, 2016 to 21, coordinated by Norway with uh, 50 partners uh, from 20 countries. And in the Intaros project, uh, the Polish partner is actually responsible for leading the, one of the largest work packages, which is devoted to enhancement of multidisciplinary in situ observing systems, with the main goal to improve gaps in the existing observatories uh, by integration of the modern, uh, new, and also mature technologies, especially for multidisciplinary observations. Uh, participation in uh, large international projects and networks is uh, of a vital importance for sustainability of our long-term observations. The good example is the Horson Station, which is a member of the Inter uh, Interact Network, Network of Terrestrial Stations, also included in the station catalog. And this, uh, this facilitates a wider uh, access for scientists from all around the world to Horson infrastructure. And Poland, also, also not being the Arctic country, is a partner in the CERN, uh, Sustain Arctic Observing Networks. Uh, Polish scientists take active part in works of different IASC working groups, for example, the Marine Working Group or Chrysler Working Group. Because of our activities in the Svalbard area, we are heavily involved also in the SIOS, the Svalbard uh, Integrated Observing System Project. And Polish partners um, also participate in the Eurogoose regional system, Arcticus. And uh, last but not least, most of our observational data are provided to international databases for open public access. And even if our uh, data repositories and the data sharing structure is not yet mature and maybe not the ideal, there is a lot of effort and increasing pressure to make our uh, long-term observational data available as widely and as fast as possible. And I think I will stop here and thank you for your attention.